Look, I know your favorite tech guru or coder bro told you that unit tests are pointless, but trust me on this, they're wrong. Exhibit A, some shit code. Now this function mixes multiple different responsibilities into some jumbled up mess of a function. And there's actually a bug in this code. Can you spot it? I'm sure you didn't. Now you non-unit test bros would create a pull request for this code and you'd have to hope that somebody reviewing your code is able to catch this bug. If nobody catches it and the pull request gets approved, you'd now have a bug in your master branch that would eventually get deployed to production. Congratulations. You played yourself. Now let me show you how the professionals would catch this bug before this code even reaches the review stage. The first thing that we would do is modularize our code by separating each concern into its own function, which happens to be the first law of writing bug-free code. Make sure you're writing modular and maintainable code. Doing this would mean that we can now create tests for each individual functionality in isolation from one another. These tests would then serve as documentation of the intended functionality of all of the components of this feature. That is, the code would conform to the tests, therefore implying that the tests are the intended functionality. So no need to write all of these crappy comments in your code. We'd just be able to read the test and understand what the code is supposed to do. And that was the second law of writing bug-free code. Write unit tests to verify the correctness of individual components. And as you saw, the first law of modularizing and breaking down the code goes hand in hand with the second law of writing unit tests. Now, if we don't break down the code, in order to test, say for example, the email validation, we need to run this whole function. And in order to run this whole function, we'd need a database connection. And this unit test quickly becomes an integration test and integration tests are expensive. So now that we've broken down our code and wrote out some unit tests, these tests are actually going to catch the bug. So we don't have to. This means that as soon as we create a pull request for this code, our CICD pipeline will fail because the test will fail. Therefore, we wouldn't even start the review process. Time, energy, and money saved. Now, let's say we go ahead and fix those issues that were causing our CICD pipeline to fail. Then we're tasked with making some change to some part of the code, and this part of the code that we need to change is already tested by our current passing tests. For example, instead of hard coding the company domain, let's say we extract it to some constant variable. Now the expectation is that this change shouldn't break any of our previous tests, but actually it does break our tests. And this is called a regression. This means some behavior that worked before no longer works as a result of our change. And what we just did there where we ran the test after making changes to see if anything breaks is called a regression test. And this is the third and final law of writing bug-free code. Very, very frequently do regression testing. And there you have it. Three laws of writing bug-free code. If you disagree, which you shouldn't, prove me wrong in the comment section.